Hi, my name is Natasha Mulholland. I'm from the Angelica Film Center in San Diego, and I'm inviting you all to join me on our new series we're calling Coffee Club, in which we've invited local industry professionals to chat with us about our favorite topic, film. So please join us, grab a coffee. This is my Knives Out coffee mug. Um, it says, my house, my rules, my coffee. And I'm using the virtual background of the interior of our beautiful Angelica Film Center in San Diego. Um, so please hit that subscribe button to our YouTube channel so you can find out more about what's going on at the film, at the, uh, film centers and uh, to watch some of our Q&As from the past. Today, our special guest is local filmmaker, Jeff Deverett. Jeff, welcome, thank you for joining us. No problem, nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me, I appreciate it. Absolutely, and so we're just gonna go over some brief questions. So tell us about yourself and your involvement with film. So I live in San Diego as well, and uh, I am a producer, director, and writer. I make family movies, feature films, um, several of them are on Netflix. As a matter of fact, this one that I'm wearing the sweatshirt for, Full Out. And we just finished making Full Out 2. You got this, it's called. Um, it's a gymnastics movie that crosses over into the breakdancing world. Really nice family Ooh. film. And we're uh, about to release that. Very exciting. Very exciting. And so what got you involved with film? Was it a special experience as a young child or did you just fall in love with it later in life? What, what was it that did it for you? I, you know what, I don't know. I just, like everybody, I love movies and you know entertainment. And so when I was graduating from high school, my dad said to me, so, and going to university, he said, what do you think you want to do in your life? And you know, like it's 18, you don't know what you want to do. So I said, sure. um, I think I want to make movies. And he said, do you want to produce them or direct them? And I said, I don't know, what's the difference? And he said, um, if you produce, you should get a law degree or a business degree. And if you direct, you should go to film school. So I said, I think producing is probably a good idea. And I went and got an undergraduate business degree and then I went to law school. Wow. And, and I left the legal career and became a filmmaker. Well, that's interesting. So you get to use both sides of your brain. So you get to be analytical in your business choices, but then also creative and imaginative. Like that's, that's really lucky. Yeah, I know. It's very fortunate. I really enjoy it a lot. Kudos to your father for encouraging you. I yeah. mean, a lot of young artistic interested people, they don't get that sort of encouragement. So well, well done. I think, I think he was more ex excited that I chose the uh, <laughs> business law side. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, but you got you did both. So well done, you. You made your eighteen year self, eighteen year old self, very proud. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, do you have a favorite movie theater snack? You know that because <laughs> I guess I, I often come to your theater, and I, I'm a big popcorn guy. I mean, one of the reasons I like going out to the movie theater is to get fresh popcorn and just join that experience. And uh, at the Angelica, it's great. You offer flavored popcorns and all kinds of stuff like that, which I love. And I, I love the whole food menu there. Oh, I love our popcorn. I, I tell everybody this, but I never get sick of popcorn, no matter what. And um, I agree, I think we've got a great menu. Um, so coming back to your films and the situation that we're in now, how has the current situation affected you and your regular events or programming or scheduled um, screenings? Well, generally we make one to two movies a year. I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that. We usually produce a movie in the summer. That's a lot. One to two movies a year? Yeah. Wow. That's that is an impressive schedule. Oh my gosh. I, I, I didn't think that was a lot. <laughs> really? Sometimes features take forever. Good for you. Yeah, no, we certainly make at least one and sometimes two. So generally, but this that's not probably not going to happen this year because because all the crew, crews are quarantined and you know, it's just, the logistics might be tricky. We'll see what happens if the quarantine lifts and if we can get something done in the fall. There is a movie that we do want to shoot. Um, we wanted to shoot this summer, but hopefully we'll be able to shoot in the fall, but that's a wait and see. Um, in terms of releasing and dis because we do self distribution. So we just finished this other movie called Full Out 2, which I mentioned. Um, we shot it last summer in Oklahoma. It's the true story of the, o the Oklahoma women's gymnastics team, University of Oklahoma, the Sooners, winning their second national championship without their star athlete, 
Brenna Dowell who left to go to the Olympics. So it's all based on a true story. We shot it on location at the University of Oklahoma and we were supposed to release that on uh, March 23rd. We we're having a big, big red carpet, uh, 700 person screening in o at the University of Oklahoma. It was all planned. Everybody was invited. All the actresses oh, and have all their, their, you know, gowns and everybody was so excited to do it. And, and then of course it got canceled. So um, we quickly changed gears and decided instead of canceling the whole thing, we decided to do it virtually. So we did a virtual red carpet. So our marketing manager, he created an Instagram filter. We sent it out to everybody and every, it looked like everybody was standing on the red carpet and they all got dressed up all the- Oh, beautiful. It, and they recorded themselves and we edited it all together as like an opening thing for the movie. And then we premiered the movie virtually, obviously. And then afterwards we had re recorded kind of like what you and I are doing right now, a Q and A session with all of the actors and played Wonderful. it. It was like attending a premiere screening that evening. Incredible. I'm sure they were thrilled to be able to have attended one way or another. And that's really creative to just sort of come up with that all in, I imagine, a very short time. Very short. We, I, like, we're talking like 48 hours and we had to interview everybody and get everything done. And, and, and of course, cancel all the flights and all the hotels and all this kind oh, of stuff. Crushing. Hotel. You know, oh, gosh. I could think of worse things to do. It worked out really well. It was a fun evening. Everybody really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, we have it forever because it's recorded. We did it through Zoom technology, you know. Well, we did the red carpet on Instagram and then we did the Q&A on Zoom, which worked out really well. That's incredible. So you were able to do this, but would you have preferred to do it in the movie theater? And also, what makes movie theaters important to you? Um, obviously, I would prefer to do it in a movie theater. Um, and actually, we were going to do it in one of your theaters in, in San Diego. We're going to do multiple premieres around the country, but the we'll one get in San you Diego. again, Jeff. It's going to happen. <laughs> oh, absolutely! No, absolutely. I always call you first, Natasha. You know that. Wonderful. Um, but anyways, the um, listen, going to the movie theaters is an experience. And first of all, as a filmmaker, that's the way you want to watch your your movies because it's big screen format. Yeah. The room is dark. It's secluded. It's it's you're only there for one reason to enjoy entertain to enjoy the movie. No distractions. You know you're discouraged from turning on your cell phone. All this kind of stuff. And and the, for me the biggest thing is the sound systems are so much better. Even in a home theater situation, yeah. you're never going to get the sound that you get in a movie theater. So, look as a filmmaker, I'm always going to want to go to a big movie theater to watch my product and everybody else's because that's the way you enjoy it the best. Um, I think a lot of the public recognizes that, that they're that going to a movie theater is an experience in terms of viewing a big movie, especially like my movies aren't big movies. They're family movies. You know, they're relatively low budget. But when you're watching these big epic movies, you know, the superhero movies and, you know, these big war movies and all these action adventure movies and everything like that, and the soundtracks are 7.1 Dolby surround. Right. I mean, you want to experience it. It's not just watching it. You need to experience it. And it's, it's such, such a, it makes it so much more eventful when you watch it in that kind of environment. It so takes you into the world. But even so, even for a family movie or a comedy, I like hearing other people's reactions. You know, if somebody else giggles, you know, it feels good that you're giggling with them, you know? <laughs> yeah, watching with an audience is a, is a whole different a whole different experience also as we as we say I, I don't know if you're watching any talk shows now but like the evening talk shows all the comedians yeah. are doing their shows without audiences without an audience. a whole different experience it's for, them so too. Hard for them it's got to be so hard because they feed off that energy right? totally totally yeah. feed off energy yeah now they could put in you know cans laugh tracks and stuff like that but it's still not the same right right agree um so Movie theaters have really stood the test of time considering, you know, television came into the picture, you know, renting movies, DVDs, all of that, streaming now. What do you think made them, you know, important to the American culture and, and had them survive and what will help them survive now? Okay, so I'll give away sort of my age a little bit by what I'm about to say. So I actually started in the film business when I got out of law school, I did not start in the production side. I started in distribution and actually spent oh. 20 years in distribution. 
And my first job was in television, so selling to TV stations, and everybody said, oh, you know, nobody's going to ever go to movie theaters because TV, ah. but they said that, you know, they said that in the, the 50s, you know, when TV became a big thing. Right. But then, but then what I really, then a year into that, I, I really switched gears and I became a specialist in home entertainment, which at the time was VHS video. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was the, you know, the heyday of blockbuster video stores and Hollywood video and all these video stores, right? Yeah. And we all used to go out. I mean, I, I'm not sure how old you are, but we also go out and rent these videos. All the time, you know? every weekend. Yep. And, uh. And then, you know, it was like an event to go to a video store, to walk the aisle, to look, touch the boxes, all this kind of stuff. And I spent, I spent most of the first 10 years of my career doing that. And then, of course, when VHS kind of became obsolete and DVDs came in, mm -hmm. then everybody said, oh, everybody's, everybody's changing. It's now DVD, it's digital. And now for sure, nobody's going to theaters because the quality of a DVD is so high, you know, it up the ante DVD players. And then television sets got more sophisticated and they became HD TVs. And everybody was like, this is it, it's over for theaters because now that viewing experience that we had at a theater is we don't need it anymore because we can replicate it at home. Well, but it's not true because not your true. screens aren't as big, the environment's not the same, the sound will never be the same. So, and you know, and like you said, ex experiencing with other people and just the whole environment. But the DVD thing did change everything. But then the biggest change that I've seen certainly in my career is the whole digital thing. Right. So now all of a sudden nobody, and by the way, Netflix, when I, back then when I started Netflix, you basically in the DVD world, you, you ordered a, you know, net, from Netflix, you ordered two or three DVDs a week and they mailed them to you. Right. And then you just mail them back and that and was mailed them back. And yeah. actually Netflix still has that service. I'm not sure how many people use it, but right. that's what Netflix was. And then it, it morphed into a digital, you know, streaming service. Mm -hmm. But the whole streaming environment has now said to everybody, Hey, you, you don't even to leave your home. You can watch it on your iPhone. You can watch it any device, anywhere, anytime, you know, at on demand right and why would we go to a theater for that and and i still say yeah that's true it's great for convenience but it's not the best environment for a viewing experience if you want to experience a hundred or two hundred million dollar movie why do it on your phone yes exactly we are in fact streaming certain films released by smaller distributors right now um you know as as in a partnership with them because they were going to miss their release date. And it's, I imagine that's got to be crushing for them. Um, but they wanted people to be able to access the content. So right now through the Angelica um, uh, website, you're able to stream a number of films that are from smaller distributors. So it's tricky because we're very, you know, obviously we're thrilled to be able to offer that service right now. Um, but it would have been a much better release to be able to see those films on the big screen without question. Oh, wait, so you're streaming through your, YouTube channel or how are you streaming it through there? You're able to click on a link through the movie link and then Magnolia and some of the other distributors are um, accessing the content to you. Like through Vimeo or through what platform? Mm, that is a good question. I'm well, not you know, like, first of all, don't get me wrong. I, uh, streaming is the main source of distribution for me right now. Mm -hmm. Um, like our movies aren't big enough. They don't usually get big theatrical releases. They never do. I mean, I, they get limited ones cause I, do them in different places that I want to do them. So streaming is everything. I mean, it's a way to get to the audience worldwide, you know, and so I, I know all the platforms. I deal with Netflix quite a bit and that type of thing. So I'm, I'm a big fan of it. It's just that what I was saying was, you know, if you want to experience a movie as opposed to watch it, you got to go to a movie theater. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, I'm not clear on which format they're actually using to stream, but I know that today we just um, released The Roads Not Taken as well as Baccarat. So um, so it's lucky. Again, we're, we're thrilled to be able to offer this content, but it's just, it's such a bummer. I would have loved to see that film on the big screen. Oh, no. But it'll be good anyway. It'll still be good. Um, so I just wanted to come back to um, whether you had a favorite film or favorite film moment from 2019. And that could be, you know, one of your events or something you attended or, you know, um, yeah. anything. Well, I mean, it would have to be for 2019 because oh, 2020, I just had this virtual red carpet premiere. That for that sure. That would, yeah. Most unique, cool. most fun, most interesting thing. In a movie theater. Yeah. And so many people, I got so much nice, 
positive feedback, you know, at a time when people just needed to have some fun and be uplifted and, and, and get around, you know, come with a creative idea to get around, you know, problem. This, this worked out really well. Um, yeah, no, listen, my big moments in, the biggest moment a filmmaker can have, and it's the most nerve wracking moment, is the first time you watch your movie in a movie theater with an audience. With the audience. I know a yeah. lot of directors leave. They can't handle it. And they it's, leave. Such, it's a nerve wracking experience and, it, and it's a great experience. Um, and, you know, often it's at a, at a festival, right? Because that's where people often launch their movies. But um, when you watch with an audience, it's the, alt, especially like not a friendly audience. Like, you know, you can have family, friends, screening, stuff like that. And everybody's going to tell you, oh, I loved it. It's great and everything. But when you watch with a real audience and you get real reaction, um, it's kind of validation that you accomplished what you wanted to and, you know, and sent a message or entertain, but it, it's so, you know, every year, like, you know, every year I have generally one or two premier screenings and then I have festival screenings and like, and that's, those are the highlight moments in terms of being a filmmaker for sure. And you sit in with the audience each time? I always do. I sit right in the middle of the room. Like I literally sit in the middle of the auditorium because I want to hear what they're saying. I and I want to hear, so I don't sit at the back. A lot of filmmakers sit at the back, right? Because they want to, I need to be amongst everybody. I want to hear what's going on around me. I always do it. That's fantastic. I love that. So what do you recommend people check out while they're at home? I mean, we have these streaming options at, on the Angelica website and through our newsletters, and you've got some films that you can stream as well. And what else, what would you recommend? Well, are you inviting me to do a plug for my new movie? Because I'm going of to. <laughs> the new movie is called Full Out 2, You Got This. It's a really nice family film. It's very upbeat, inspirational. As I said, it's the true story of the uh, University of Oklahoma Sooners who win their second national championship without their star athlete. And uh, it crosses over from the world of gymnastics to break dancing. And we have this the number one break dancer girl, B girl in the world um, doing oh, wow. that role. So she's the, the dancing. I thought the gymnasts did crazy stuff, but the dancers, these break dancers, they are insane. They can do, they do stuff that is defies gravity and when they spin on their heads without their hands and stuff like that it's like how do you do that and that's gotta hurt oh man so can um, we catch the original as well the original okay so the original's on netflix right now that's the easiest place to get it mm -hmm. um, and if you don't have netflix you can stream it also it's on you know any of the amazon itunes uh vimeo all the major platforms and the new one um, will be on Amazon and iTunes in about three weeks, but right now it's only available on Vimeo. But if people want to watch it, they could just go to our website, which is Full Out Two Movie, mm -hmm. Full Out Two Movie dot com, and then you just push Watch Now, and it takes you to a link to watch it. Wonderful! I bet a lot of people are looking for family friendly films right now. I'm well, sure. They since, are. since our premiere on March 23rd, we've had thousands, like about. I know the exact number. It's been like about 2,632 as of before this interview um, who have gone to our website to watch it. And we just, we have, we've done what you call a soft release. Like we haven't really announced it yet because we have to wait till it's up on these other platforms. But right. uh, for the world that we announced it to the gymnastics world and gymnasts, of course, have been engaged. You know, they, they, they really love these kind of movies. Excellent. And are there any releases that you're most looking forward to in 2021 or perhaps even later this year when life goes back to normal? I, Natasha, I see pretty, I see lots of movies just because mm -hmm. I love movies and I'm always curious the style and, you know, what the uh, producers and the directors are doing with, you know, their various movies. You know, the big movies are epics. They're a whole different ball game. The smaller movies, I really enjoy them. So when you say, am I looking forward to everything? I'm just looking forward to getting back to, I go to the theater at least once a week and I'm just looking to get back into that stream and, and just feel sort of normal again and, and just enjoy whatever is out there. A big, small, you know, I love all the genres. I, I watch a lot of different stuff. I am totally with you on that. I went every Every week after work, I would see at least one movie and I definitely feel like something's missing in my life. 
Well, um, thank you so much, Jeff. And uh, let me just say thank you to everyone for watching. And um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel to find out more and to join us for more coffee and conversations on our Coffee Club series. Um, you can also watch some of our Q&As from the Angelica Film Center in New York on this channel. And feel free to uh, catch us on Facebook or Instagram for more information. Thank you again, Jeff Deverett with Full Out to the Film. Thank you so much. Thanks, Natasha.